Hello and welcome to a tag video. This is the Our Tag Means Death book tag that was created by Kaz over at Cats and Camera. It is inspired by the TV show Our Flag Means Death, which I have never seen, but that's fine. I'm doing the tag anyway. If you have seen the show, I'm just gonna say go right ahead and do this. You should. This will probably mean a lot more to you than it does to me, but um Kaz did it it's a fun tag um and if you do like the show you should definitely go watch her video because she's super into it and like her tag is very involved and she includes lots of like inside jokes and things that I do not understand but still a fun tag so I'm gonna do it um her video link down below I'm not gonna tag anyone specific because I don't know who has seen this show again not me but fun tag um, we'll just get into it. The first question. Pilot, a group ensemble you would love to join, but you have to kick out a member. Mutiny. For this, I chose one of my favorite YA fantasy series. Um, The Naming, or rather The Books of Pelennor by Alison Crogan. Not specifically this book so much, just like the series as a whole. I would love to join this cast, um, potentially after all the murder and death and destruction happens and the world ends but like after all that sure um because it does seem like apart from the death and destruction and war it seems like a lovely happy world very like supportive of everyone so lovely would like to join um the character i would kick out is kai so i don't want to talk about him in case you haven't read the books because his identity is kind of a spoiler um, I was never the biggest fan of his character. Like, I liked his plot lines. I liked the things that happened. But in terms of him, he just never seemed super relevant to the story to me. And I just never cared about him. Which is unfortunate because he has his own entire book. And I think that's the only book in this series that I've never reread. I've reread this series so many times. And I just skipped that book because it's kind of... Not entirely irrelevant, but not directly relevant either. So yeah, I would I would love to join this cast though because it's such a wonderful series and like the way she talks about, they're called schools, but they're mostly like communities. The way she talks about the communities is really wonderful and like the way they support each other and the way they take care of each other and like the way art is involved, it's all like really lovely and just it seems like a good place again once you like get beyond the whole war and corruption thing. It seems lovely. Question two, a damned man. Love or loathe, a book you loved or hated that everyone else seems to have the opposite opinion on. For this, I went with Fair Town by Frederick Bachman. I actually have the sequel here, Us Against You. Everyone loved Bear Town a few years ago, whenever it was super big on Booktube. Everyone was talking about how amazing it was, and it sounded 100% up my alley. Like, I was super stoked for that book because it sounded like the kind of thing I really, really enjoy. And I love when there are hyped books that actually sound like they're to my reading taste because it feels like so often hype books like aren't necessarily like my kind of thing. And I was just so down for it. And then I read it and it was just like, not terrible, but one of the more mediocre books I've read in a minute. I didn't really enjoy it at all, which is why I haven't picked up the sequel because I bought the sequel before I read Beartown and then was like, huh, so now it's been like three or four years and I've still not read the sequel. I don't know. It was just, I didn't get what everyone loved about that book like people talked about how amazing it was and like how important it was and all I felt about that book was annoyance like I was I was not impressed question three a gentleman pirate a book you would sell your booty for to own right now I said go forgotten by Karen Slaughter which is kind of a cheat because like if I really wanted I could go buy this book right now but I have it on hold at the library it's Karen Slaughter's most recent release. I pretty much always read her books from the library just because I find very little point in like buying them to just read once. Um, but 
this came out in August and she's a very popular thriller author. So I have been on the holds list at the library for a good long minute now. And I think I still have a good long minute left. So <laughs> I would love for this hold to come in at the library, but I'm, I'm, I'm having to be patient here. And I hope it's worth the wait, but she usually is. Question four, discomfort in a married state. First meeting a character you instantly fell in love with. I had to pick Alice Lindgren from An American Wife by Curtis Sittenfeld. This is historical fiction-esque. It's kind of inspired by the life of Laura Bush. Um, like close enough that reading the book you, you will see the similarities and like you won't be able to not see them unless you know absolutely nothing about Laura Bush. But it's like, it's basically like the Cliff Notes version of her life and then turned into a novel that's not actually about her as a person. But the character development in this book is amazing. You get this really close look at the main character, Alice, like throughout her childhood and her teen years and her adulthood as her husband becomes the president of the United States. And she's such an interesting person. Like her character is just so amazingly well done. Like if you like really slow, like, character driven like really really character driven books I would recommend this so much because it was amazing for that and she was just a really fantastically done character. Question five the best revenge is dressing well a beautiful book that is wonderful inside and out. I had to pick a children's classic here that I read recently um A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett this book this copy is lovely it's like and i always feel like with childhood classics publishers always put like extra effort into the covers and stuff because they know like nostalgia factor is a thing and this is just like a really nice hardback and it just captures the vibe of the book so much and it's just it makes me happy and then the book itself is just like absurdly lovely like the loveliest thing you could imagine it made me so happy um but i really really love this and i love this copy so yay question six the art of fuckery a book that took you on a wild ride i'm actually going with a current read for this because i didn't want to just like keep talking about the same books i always talk about because the night before by lisa jackson wild ride but um, currently read, I'm almost done, Bee Season by Myla Goldberg. This book went places. It starts with, like, this girl who's kind of, like, mediocre in terms of her family. Like, her mother is a high-powered lawyer. Her father is, I don't know his exact title. He's a, an academic who studies Judaism, essentially, and he's, like, very religious and a scholar and, you know... And her brother is like gifted, does really well in school, does really well with Hebrew. And she's just kind of like mediocre, you know, like just shy of average. And she's always felt that. And then she wins her class spelling bee. And then she wins her school spelling bee. And she goes on to districts and nationals. And like, it seems fairly normal. And then it gets into like the Jewish mysticism, <laughs> which was so weird. Um, and I couldn't follow. I, I think maybe you would have to be a little bit more educated on Judaism in order to follow all of that than I am. And her brother, like, joined a cult, and I'm not at the end yet. Um, again, I have just a little bit to go. But this book has gone places <laughs> that I did not expect, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm not saying that is a bad thing. But it's a strange book, so really, really enjoying though. It just, it is a ride. Question seven, this is happening. Treasure Map, an underrated gem of a book that people should read. I am trying not to just talk about the same books over and over, so I did not go with The President's Daughter by Ellen Emerson White. I feel like that just stands and I'll talk about her in a moment. Instead, I have gone with Most Likely by Sarah Watson. This is a YA contemporary about four girls in high school, and basically the premise is that you know from the prologue that one of them is going to become the president of the United States. 
and you follow them through their senior year of high school. Um, it's really good. <laughs> it's like, I wasn't expecting much going in, but it's just like this really lovely YA contemporary. It's like so heartfelt and it's really just like sweet and like genuine and I don't know the friendships feel really lovely and real and it just it doesn't need the gimmick that one of them is going to become president like that's not the driving force of the story it's just like they're going through high school they're starting to their senior year of high school they're starting to like grow apart for the first time and they're dealing with different issues that are causing them to like pull away from each other but also in other ways pull into each other and it's just like a really well done story on teenage friendship that I would highly recommend if you like YA contemporaries like this because I just think it was really wonderfully done. It like like I said I didn't have high expectations going in but it, it genuinely made me so happy. Question 8. We go way back. Your favorite animal companion and I had trouble with this um because I, I tend to actively avoid books that have animals in them because of like the whole animal abuse thing like I just don't like to read about unhappy animals and I don't know why because I can read about any other kind of like pain or suffering or badness in the world but for whatever reason reading about animal abuse is just like the one thing I can't do so and not just animal abuse, but like any type of sad animal I tend to avoid. So I just avoid animals in books in general. So the one thing I did go with here is A Mango Shaped Space by Wendy Bass. This is about a young girl with synesthesia. It's a middle grade book and she has a cat named Mango. And Mango is sick. Um, I love Mango. He's such a sweet little thing. It makes me cry every time I read this book, which I'm not gonna say why, but it's about a girl and her sick cat, so you do the math there. Um, but yeah, I was kind of, I didn't have a lot to choose from here, so I figured this is named after the cat. That's probably close enough, and I love it. Question nine, Act of Grace, a series that started off great but went downhill, or a series you DNF'd. So I went with something that has like, the first book is one of my favorites. I give the first book five stars and then I give the third book one star. And the second book is like three stars, I think. Um, it, it went downhill fast. Um, the Becca Cooper series by Tamara Pierce. This is a prequel to her Tortile books. She writes basically two fantasy universes. She has like the circle of magic world and then the Tortal world and she has a bunch of different series in this world that take place in like different times and like a lot of characters like overlap between them but this is set like several hundred years prior to most of the other books in the series and it's kind of like half fantasy half like cop procedural <laughs> which I like. Um, and this book was fascinating. It's about a girl who wants to become a cop in basically the poorest part of town because that's where she's from. Like she grew up in the poorest part of the city and she still sees that at home. She still lives there. So she winds up tracking like a serial killer who's killing children um, from the poorest part of town. And she winds up doing it a lot on herself because they don't have the resources and it's so fantastic i love this book and then book three was about like counterfeiters which is less exciting than serial killers going after children and then the third book is this very long trek in order to track down a prince who's been kidnapped and it's odd um it's very boring like this book was so good like when i read this i had such high hopes for the series and after reading the third one and hating it so much i went back to read this one and it's just as amazing it's just as good like i don't know where she went wrong in this series but from what i've read this is not an unpopular opinion like a lot of people hate the third book and it's just like there's just so much that doesn't work in that book for me and the characters do things that feel so out of character that don't make sense for who they are as people and 
it's so boring these books are written in like journal style so like there is kind of an issue with the storytelling when she doesn't have access to her journal or when she's sick and that happens a lot in the third one where she's just recapping like two weeks at a time and it's just like this is not a good way to tell this story it doesn't work and I just hate the third one so much but weirdly this book is fantastic so yeah this is probably like the most extreme example of this I've I've ever read so yeah and I'm not the only one I have talked to many of people who adore this book and hate Mastiff that's the third one but Terry is fantastic I would just treat this book as a standalone because it works as a standalone and then question 10, the last question, wherever you go, there you are, an auto buy author. I had to go with my queen, our lord and savior, Ellen Emerson White. Have I talked about her enough recently? I don't think so. Um, she writes largely YA, some middle grade, ranging from contemporary to historical fiction. She's been publishing since the 80s and she's amazing. She's my favorite author. I love everything she's ever written. I just buy her books all the time. I buy books from her that I'm not very interested in reading. I just buy them because they're her. Like, do I have an example? Yes, I do. I just said, I avoid books about animals. And this is a, this cover is just a dog sitting outside in the rain looking sad. And I, I don't like that, but because she wrote it, I bought it and I will probably read it at some point. Not soon, but I'll read it at some point. But I just, I, I literally just go online and I'll just Google books by her and then start tracking them down because some of them are hard to find because they're out of print. But I've bought so many of her books. I own so many of her books. I might own all of her books. No, I don't. I'm close though. I think she's written some like children's books that I don't own yet like picture book type things but I love her she wrote the president's daughter which is like my favorite series ever I recommend it all the time so if you haven't heard me talk about that if you haven't heard my whole Ellen Emerson White spiel let me know and I can like educate y'all on her in the comments because she is wonderful she wrote I have her books all over my shelves because she's written so many no one knows that's not her book no one knows about her but then when we started talking, they were like, oh yeah, I did read her books. Cause she wrote those um, Dear America books, some of them, um, those middle grade historical fiction diaries. And she wrote the one about the Titanic, which like a lot of people have read. That was a very popular childhood book in like the late nineties, early two thousands. She wrote that, I own it, but I'm not gonna go find it. Cause again, my shelves are a wreck. But she wrote, this was her last book, A Season of Darren Grayley. It's about a girl who plays baseball. She's a really great high school baseball pitcher. And then she goes to the major league. She's the first girl ever drafted by a major league baseball team. And she goes directly after high school. And it's about her playing in the minor leagues for the first time, playing professionally for the first time as the first girl. And it's a, it's a very realistic approach. Like, she gets drafted by Major League Baseball, but, like, she doesn't go start playing for, like, the Yankees, you know? She's playing for, like, a bottom-tier, like, minor league team as she, like, builds her skills and works up. And it's just, like, really, really well done. Like, I love her. She's my favorite. Um, If I do nothing with this booktube channel, I just want to, like, brainwash people into reading her just like spread the news of Ellen Emerson White she's amazing so if you've got nothing else from this video you should really look up her books I highly recommend if you want specific recommendations let me know because I can tailor something to you so that was the our tag is death book tag our tag means death our tag means death book tag um I'm tired so I'm gonna go as always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.